Over 10 years ago, Nissan released a concept car, dubbed as the IDX. This was going to revolutionize the car scene with enthusiast level performance mixed with simplicity. But then, Nissan cancelled it on the last minute. What happened? Why did Nissan cancel it? And fast forward to today, Nissan must have realized that they really missed this opportunity. And the question is, will they be bringing it back? The year was 2012, and Toyota has just made a successful debut of their GT86, a car that truly brought the fan back to the car enthusiast. From this inspiration, on 2013, Nissan made waves at the Tokyo Motor Show by the unveiling one of its most promising design, the IDX Concept, a car designed to revitalize the nostalgia of the classic Datsun 510. This rare concept was well received and celebrated by critics for its straightforward design, engaging driving experience, and embodying the essence of a simple yet thrilling rear-wheel drive sports car. Adding to the excitement, Nissan also introduced the Nismo IDX, positioned as the performance-oriented variant of the concept. Yeah! This model was intended to represent the pinnacle of Nissan's modern entry-level sports car lineup, promising enhanced performance and sporty features. From its reveal, the IDX concept generated a lot of buzz among critics and automotive enthusiasts alike, quickly becoming a hot topic across online forums and social media. Its introduction came at a time when Nissan had not released a compelling entry-level rear-wheel drive sports car since the S15 Sylvia, which had left a remarkable absence in the market. The IDX was seen as a potential game-changer, something that ticks all the boxes for car enthusiasts affordable, rear-wheel drive, sporty, fun to drive, and can rival Toyota's car of the year, the GT86. Overall, the IDX concept reignited hope for a new era of accessible sports cars from Nissan, positioning the brand to compete with rivals in a segment that many felt had been neglected. So, what happened? It's already 2024, and we still haven't seen the IDX from Nissan. It's surprising, especially since there was so much excitement and positive feedback that from fans amazing. and the public. Why did Nissan decide to pull the plug on a concept that seemed to have such strong consumer support? Before we answer those significant questions, let us look at the roots of the IDX and explore why Nissan chose the old Datsun 510 as an inspiration for the IDX concept. In the 1960s, Japanese cars had a reputation for being cheap and disposable, much like how many people view Chinese cars today. Made in Japan didn't really sound as good at the time, especially since the Great War was still fresh on people's mind. Consumers back then often saw Japanese cars as budget options that lacked quality and durability. After the Second World War, German engineers continued to produce high-quality cars. Nissan began to take note of the German cars. They were particularly interested in the BMW 2002, which was impressively well-made. Car enthusiasts loved the 2002 for its lightness and nimble handling qualities that made it thrilling alternative to the heavy, testosterone-boosting muscle cars of the Americans. Inspired by the excitement surrounding the BMW 2002, Nissan decided to create a similar model. They wanted to capture the same spirit of fun and performance, showing that Japanese cars could be more than just affordable options. Well, as they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. With determination, this became a pivotal moment for Nissan. <laughs> helping to change how people view Japanese cars and paving the way for their success in the global market. It was all about blending innovation with a love for driving, and it marked the beginning of a new era for Japanese automakers. Nissan took a major step forward when it acquired the Prince Motor Company. For those who know a bit about Nissan's history, Prince is famous for creating the iconic Prince Skyline, which eventually evolved into the legendary GTR Skylines. This acquisition was a game changer for Nissan, not only because it brought the Skyline into their lineup, but also because it introduced a remarkable engine, the U20. This 2.0 liter four-cylinder was inspired by the Mercedes-Benz engines of the time and packed a punch with 150 horsepower. 
Interestingly, instead of putting the U20 in their new economy car, the 510, Nissan took what they learned from it and developed the L16 engine. This 1.6 liter overhead cam engine started off with a spirited 97 horsepower, and in some versions, a special twin Hitachi carburetor setup pushed it to nearly 110 horsepower. The 510 was primarily designed as an affordable, lightweight, real-wheel drive car for everyday drivers, and not a racing machine. So Nissan chose the L16 for this model. This decision really reflected their commitment to creating a fun and accessible driving experience for everyone. The 510 was launched October 1967. The 510 lineup included a four-door sedan, followed by a two-door sedan, a five-door station wagon, and a two-door coupe. The humble Datsun 510 initially expected to be nothing more than an economy box when it was first released. At just $1,996, which equates to just around $19,000 today, well, adjusted for inflation of course, the 510 was incredibly affordable. It was an easy to buy and maintained as a Volkswagen Beetle, which was very common back then. However, the 510 offered nearly twice the speed on straightaways and was a total thrill to drive around the corners. Another thing people didn't expect was that the Nissan 510 nearly matched the Datsun 240Z sports car record of sweeping 10 out of 10 national SCCA C production championships. For the 510, it was then called Sedan Racer. This success helped change the perception of Nissan and other Japanese brands, showing they could compete seriously with European manufacturers. Beyond its great price, the 510 had the added benefit of sharing some parts with the popular S30 Nissan Fairlady, or commonly known in the US of A as the Datsun 240Z. The recipe for the 510 was simple and effective, an affordable, lightweight, rear-wheel drive family car with fully independent suspension. It was like a sports car for everyone, reminiscent of the S chassis Silvia from the early to late 90s, just without the turbo noise. If you look at it from another perspective, the plot arc of the Nissan slash Datsun 510 is somewhat similar with the Toyota Corolla AE86. At first glance, they were just practical cars designed for everyday people, but their innate design contained great potential, which ended up capturing the hearts of car enthusiasts around the world. What's fascinating is how both cars with their lightweight builds and rear-wheel drive setups found their way into the racing scene. Enthusiasts saw the potential in them, started modifying them, and took them to the track. Before long, they were competing and actually winning in their respective race class. Unlike our well-known JDM supercars, which were designed for speed and power, the Datsun 510 and AE86 were Japanese cars which came from different grassroots. They were born with simplicity, practicality, and fun. One thing that really boggled me is, did those Japanese engineers knew that they were going to create legendary cars when they designed them? I think their situation back then was different. Maybe they were out there to prove that they were capable of making something good, something that they can be proud of. But hey, that's just a maybe. Let me know what you guys think. Pop it down in the comments below. Okay, let's now talk on why the IDX concept was scrapped by Nissan. They already knew that it received positive races from enthusiasts and the press. On top of that, they also knew that the simplistic formula for entry-level rear-wheel drive sports cars works. You know, the standard lightweight, affordable, sporty rear-wheel drive car. And they can see this with the monumental success of the Toyota GT86. It's all there. The signs all point to the clear success of the IDX. But why? Why did they cancel it? Well, an anonymous Nissan engineer shared his thoughts on Reddit. This person revealed that Nissan did have plans to produce the IDX Coupe. However, things got complicated from a business perspective. There was only one factory which capable of producing this car, and it was based in Tuchigi, Japan. And this is the same plant that was already busy building the 370Z and GTR at the time. Now, even though this plant may have the capacity for the IDX, even in smaller quantities, Nissan ultimately felt that the tools needed for its development were just too expensive. 
aka it's impractical since those tools would only be used for this one model. They couldn't justify the costs. The other concern was that if they went ahead with the IDX coupe production, it might affect the sales and demand for the 370Z. After all, the 370Z was fairly new at this time, just about 4 years old. It was tough balancing act for Nissan, and in the end, they went with practicality rather than passion. Or, in other words, they decided to keep it safe and went the easy route of spending less and making more money. Instead of building mindshare for their brand by captivating the entry-level enthusiast market, it was clear that the Nissan at the time didn't have the same fuel as the Datsun from the 60s. For us here at JDM Lifeline, it's pretty clear that Nissan decided not to move forward with the IDX concept because they got called fate. Oh, okay. If you look back at the late 90s, Nissan's finances were not doing very well and was on the brink of bankruptcy. Despite having sporty models and a flagship car, their lineup at that time just wasn't selling. Maybe they didn't want to risk going through that kind of situation again. And like I said, they wanted to play it safe. Safe means boring. Boring means poor passion and could potentially end up losing mindshare. This is a short-sighted approach which will hurt their brand in the long run. Furthermore, electric vehicle technology was a new thing then, and this was starting to take off in the car industry. So, they shifted their focus and Nissan decided that it wanted to get in on that action instead. They see electric propulsion as the future, especially with the tightening of emission regulations around the world. It made sense for them to focus on where the industry is headed, and they went ahead and made the leaf. Yes, that leaf which was very successful. And then this leaf, which was somewhat better. And after that, they decided to keep it safe and didn't push any further. Tesla and the Chinese eventually swallowed this market. You can see the pattern here, right? Nissan, unfortunately, is a letdown and possibly doesn't know which direction they want to take. They had this gem, which had really great potential and they just abandoned it car enthusiasts were genuinely excited about the possibility of an affordable option that offered the thrill of driving. By choosing not to produce this model, many would argue that Nissan seems to be losing touch with their fan base and is definitely missing out on a community that values excitement behind the wheel. It's more than just a missed opportunity. It feels like a disconnect between the brand and the passionate drivers who love what they do. When you think about it, the only entry-level JDM sports cars we have to choose from right now in 2024 are the Toyota GR86 and the Mazda ND Miata slash Roadster. There is definitely a gap in this market and we're hoping that Nissan leadership has finally reflected on what could have been. In 2024, the issues that Nissan had on 2013 with the IDX production may not exist anymore. The demand is clearly there. so. We need the IDX to be released. However, I suppose time will tell. In the meantime, if you are with me on this one, let's all take action. Post something on social media. Tag Nissan with hashtag release the IDX movement. We need Nissan to give the IDX another lifeline. Remember, the GTR is going away soon. There are talks about the Sylvia, but nothing concrete. And the Z is... Well, staying is the Z. Nissan's car enthusiast future is unclear right now. They needed something. They need the IDX. And if you like videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Alright, I'll see you guys on the next video.